Hi, I'm Sanket Kedia. I'm an engineer at Chroma. I've been working on implementing a new indexing algorithm that I want to share with you today. One of the ways you can ground an LLM's response to a particular query is by augmenting the context window with a set of documents that are relevant to the query. This is commonly done with embeddings in conjunction with an embedding model. A user's query is also embedded using the same model that was used on a broader set of data, which is stored in a database. The database is able to query the data to find vectors that are nearest to the query vector using some distance metric. In such a system, we are not looking for an exact match. We are looking for the closest match or a set of matches, since it would be far too slow and expensive to look at every record in a collection. We need to index the data to speed up and reduce the compute required to find our result set. There's a lot of literature on approximate algorithms. These algorithms have fast search as well as high accuracy, aka recall. Also with large data sets, fitting the entire index in primary storage such as RAM is expensive. So solutions that use secondary storage such as disk are of paramount interest. Broadly, there are two classes of solutions, inverted index and graph-based solutions. Inverted indexes use a clustering algorithm such as k-means to cluster the points. During a query, you first find the clusters that are near to the query. For each of these clusters, you compare points of that cluster with the query and rank them. I have two clusters here, the blue cluster and the orange cluster. If my query is somewhere here, it is clear that the orange cluster is nearer and I should search all the orange points and rank them in order to get results for my query. On the other hand, if my query is somewhere here, it is nearer to the blue cluster and thus I should search these points. Often these inverted index based solutions heavily quantize the vectors. That means they map the vectors into a lower dimensional space. This is done to speed up the distance computations. Since recall can suffer due to quantization, in the end they do a re-ranking where they rank the points using the non-quantized vectors. They also over-query a lot. That is a factor of about 10 to 100x to account for the poor recall. Graph-based solutions construct a proximity graph of these points. These graphs have both short and long range edges these con that connect pairs that are close to each other, as well as pairs that are far apart from each other in the metric space. HNSW is one prominent example of such a graph. It is a multi-layered graph inspired by skip lists. Search in HNSW begins with an entry point. We explore all neighbors of the point, choosing the point that is the closest. We then examine the neighbors of this closest point, choosing the nearest and so on, until we can't find a point that is closer than the closest point that we have tracked so far. So assuming green is the query point and yellow is the entry point, this process will end up with orange as the result. Graphs solve the problem of structuring the data in the index in a computationally efficient manner. It is easy to traverse the graph to find similar points once it is constructed. However, the key issue with graph-based approaches are that they are not disk-friendly because the access patterns are pretty random. Distributed Chroma is built on top of object storage. Due to this, access patterns that are akin to a graph are not suitable. This is because multiple sequential round trips to object storage will make the query latency very high. Instead, inverted index-based approaches where you fan out multiple requests to object store in parallel are more suitable. A sequential fetch in this graphic would cost a total time of 152 milliseconds since it is the sum of time taken by individual requests. On the other hand, for a parallel, the latency is the time taken by the longest request, thus it will be 45 milliseconds. SPAN was published in 2021 and uses an inverted index based approach with a few key innovations. It uses a hierarchical balanced clustering algorithm that results in clusters that are uniform in size. This reduces the variance in latencies and makes tail latencies more predictable. One of the issues with clustering is that points that are at the boundary of two clusters are likely to be missed when searching, since they are rigidly assigned to only one cluster. 
SPAN uses a closer clustering rule for assigning these boundary points. It assigns a point to more than one cluster. It also skips assigning a point to a cluster based on certain rules. I have a yellow point and I want to find assignments of this point. I assign it to the orange cluster since it is near to it. I also assign it to the blue cluster since it has the same criteria. The green cluster is somewhat farther away from this point and I want to evaluate if I should really be putting this point in the green cluster. I see that the distance of this point from the green cluster is higher than the distance of this point from the blue cluster, which happens to be the closest cluster for this point. Thus, I will skip assigning this point. This is the closer clustering assignment algorithm. It basically says that if the distance of a point from a cluster is one plus epsilon greater than the distance of that point from the closest cluster, then I can skip assigning that point to that cluster. Naturally, if you assign a point to more than one cluster, you need to ensure diversity amongst the clusters. To ensure diversity, SPAN uses a relative neighborhood graph pruning. The insight is that two close posting lists are more likely to be both recalled by the navigating index. Instead of storing similar vectors in close posting lists, it would be better to store different vectors to increase the number of seen vectors in the online search. I want to find assignments of the yellow point. I include it in the orange cluster. I also include it in the green cluster. I am evaluating whether I should include this point in the blue cluster. I see that the distance of this point from the blue cluster is greater than the distance between the blue cluster and the orange cluster. The RNG rule says that I need to skip assigning this point to the blue cluster. The insight is that when I'm querying for this point, both the orange and the blue clusters are likely to be recalled. Hence, it is wasteful to include this same point in both the clusters. At query time, it uses pruning similar to closer clustering assignment, wherein it prunes candidates that are far away from the closest center. As you add points to the index in real time, the index quality degrades. Data distribution shifts happen and the centers drift away from the true representation. Another paper titled SP Fresh has key innovations that enable adding points in real time and keeping the index quality high. To keep the posting lists uniform in size, they are split after a certain threshold. The size of the orange cluster here has exceeded the threshold and it will be split into two smaller clusters. Splitting results in creation of new centers, thus there could be points that no longer belong to the correct centers and need a reassignment. The paper identifies two categories of such points that it calls as NPA violations. First, points from the original split cluster can have a suboptimal assignment. After split, the yellow point from the orange cluster might need a reassignment. It is because its distance from the new center has become greater than its distance from the previous non-split center. That is to say, the orange line is bigger than the black line. This is a necessary but not a sufficient condition. All we are saying is, that because the distance has increased from what it was before, there might exist another center that could be optimal. Secondly, neighboring points of the split cluster can also have suboptimal assignment. The yellow neighboring point from the blue cluster in this graphic might need a reassignment. Its distance from the green cluster has become smaller than its distance from the previous non-split cluster. That is, the green line is smaller than the black line. Thus, its new neighboring centroids are getting closer and thus better than the old one. Therefore, it is necessary to check if the new and closer centroids are in fact actually closer than its current existing blue centroid. Hence, the necessary condition. We had to make custom adaptations for Chroma for our architecture. 
Since we already have HNSW index that we used for local chroma, we simply reused it for the in-memory centroid search. The results gave high recall and performance, so we did not have to implement the SP tag structure that the SPAN paper proposes. We also had to adapt the algorithm to efficiently use object storage. During read time, after we have the candidate clusters, we fan out parallel requests to object storage to get the posting list for these clusters. We then brute force them in parallel. We have a query planning framework that enables us to construct this plan easily. Our storage abstraction ensures optimal network bandwidth utilization by deduplicating requests to the same key. It also has rate limiting. To reduce tail latencies, we prefetch all blocks from the object storage to the local SSD of the node. This is done asynchronously in the background. SPAN and SPFresh are live in production today. We have tested internally for various dataset sizes. Warm queries take 10 to 20 milliseconds with more than 95% recall. We are very happy with the results. Thanks for watching.